on October 1, 1948, in the skies over Fargo, North Dakota, a wildly publicized UFO incident occurred. George Gorman was only 25 years old when this incident occurred, but he was already a veteran fighter pilot of the Second World War. The UFO event Gorman was about to be involved in would divide UFO researchers for years to come. On October 1st, George Gorman was participating in cross-country flight with other military pilots in his P-51 Mustang. At approximately 8.30 p.m., he arrived over Fargo. The other pilots decided to land at Fargo's Hector Airport, but because of the clear, cloudless conditions, Gorman decided to get some night flying time in and stayed in the air. Roughly 30 minutes later at 9 p.m., he flew over a football stadium where a high school football game was being held. The only other aircraft in the air at the time was a small Piper Cub flying roughly 500 feet below him. Soon after seeing the Piper Cub to the west, Gorman saw another object in the air. He couldn't make out what the body of the craft looked like. All he saw was a blinking light coming from it. At 9.07 p.m., Gorman contacted the control tower at Fargo's Hector Airport and asked if they had any air traffic in the area other than him and the Piper Cub. The control tower responded back that they didn't, and they then contacted the Piper Cub. Dr. A.D. Cannon was the man flying the Piper Cub. He had another passenger on board with him. When the controller asked if Cannon, too, could see the object, he responded that both him and his passenger could both see the object. Unsure of what this object was, and who was flying it, Gorman told the tower he was going to get a closer look at the object, to see if he could identify it. Gorman throttled his plane to full power, which was roughly 400 miles per hour. Soon, Gorman realized the object was going too fast for him to catch in a straight run. He knew to catch this object, he would have to try and cut it off. Gorman turned to the right and then approached the object at roughly 5,000 feet. Before Gorman got near the object, it quickly took off flying at about 500 feet over his Mustang. Gorman was now able to get a good look at the object. He described it as being a simple orb or ball of light and only being around 6 to 8 inches in diameter. He also noticed that when the object increased in speed, it got brighter and stopped blinking. For a moment, Gorman lost sight of the object, but when he located it again, it was coming straight at him. Before the object ran into him, it made a sudden vertical climb. Gorman decided to give chase. Gorman was able to climb to an altitude of roughly 14,000 feet when his plane began to stall. The object then seemed to make another head-on pass but broke off before coming close to Gorman's plane. Now the object was directly over the Fargo airport. L.D. Jensen, an air traffic controller at the airport, was able to see the object through a pair of binoculars, but could see no form or shape around the light. Jensen was now joined by Dr. Cannon and his passenger from the Piper Cub, who had just landed and wanted a better view. Gorman followed the object for a little longer, until he was approximately 25 miles southwest of Fargo. At 14,000 feet, Gorman saw the object roughly 3,000 feet below him. He dove at the object one last time at full power. The object then made another vertical climb, and Gorman watched his object pass visually out of range. It was around 9.27 now, and Gorman flew back to Fargo's Hector Airport. Later on, Gorman gave a statement to investigators about the sighting. I am convinced that there was definite thought behind its maneuvers. I am further convinced that the object was governed by the laws of inertia because its acceleration was rapid, but not immediate, and although it was able to turn fairly tight at considerable speed, it still followed a natural curve. When I attempted to turn with the object, I blacked out temporarily due to excessive speed. I am in fairly good physical condition, and I do not believe that there are many, if any, pilots who could withstand the turn and speed affected by that object and remain conscious. The object was not only able to outturn and outspeed my aircraft, but was able to attain a far steeper climb, and was able to maintain a constant rate of climb, far in excess of my aircraft. These were the days before Project Blue Book. At the time, it was Project Sign that was the U.S. Air Force's official investigation into UFOs. Investigators from Project Sign 
question Gorman and the other witnesses. They also used a Geiger counter on Gorman's Mustang to check for radiation and found that it was measurably more radioactive than other fighters. Later on, their conclusion was the higher radiation level of Gorman's plane was probably due to the higher altitude he had flown. They also came to the conclusion that Gorman was chasing a weather balloon. They said that the object's maneuvers were an illusion brought on by the movement of Gorman's fighter. They also thought at some points of the chase, Gorman might have mistaken the plant Jupiter for the object. There are parts of this UFO encounter that sound like a weather balloon, like the diameter of the object when he got close, but some of it doesn't really sound like a weather balloon at all. A weather balloon could outclimb an aircraft without a doubt, but at a faster rate of speed, I really don't think so. Not only that, he was convinced this thing had intelligence behind it. Not saying he couldn't have mistaken a weather balloon for something else, but if he had, he probably wasn't a really good choice to be a fighter pilot. So let me know what you guys think. Was it a weather balloon Gorman was chasing, or was it something else? When you're done with that, you should go to parafiles.net for more on UFOs and anything else paranormal. Thanks for watching, and remember, there's no reason to be normal when you can be paranormal. Take care.